Hey BC, it's Greeno. I uh, thought I would show the M's for uh, metal and hard rock 80s stuff. Uh, kind of just goofing around today. I'm off on vacation again. And uh, just been listening to music at a yard sale this morning and picked up a couple things. Nothing major, I'll show that later. And uh, last night, went and got our uh, Faster Pussycat. Pink, or uh, Pink Floyd, Pretty Boy Floyd, uh, tickets, uh, ten bucks, it's like, are you kidding me? So, a few of us are going down checking that out, uh, it's Monday night coming up, so I gotta uh, go ahead and get started, uh, right now I'm listening to, uh, The Warriors, metal band from Canada, I believe, I haven't really looked it up yet. It's on uh, Attic Records out of Canada. I love the cover. It's all sci-fi. Has the uh, looks like a distant planet, but yet they still drive doom buggies up there. Evidently, I guess that's the best thing to drive on a faraway planet. All right, we'll get started. Uh, like I said, we're doing the M, starting at the back, working forward. First up is. Uh, MSG, this is the Macaulay Shanker group. You know, it started out as uh, Michael, the Michael Shanker group, and then when uh, uh, Michael Macaulay, is that his name? Robin Macaulay, joined the band, changes to Macaulay Shanker group. This is uh, Save Yourself. And I actually like uh, this era. I like Macaulay's vocals. Uh, perfect timing. And then back to the Michael Shanker group. It's, uh, Rock Will Never Die. It's a live album. Built to Destroy. Assault Attack. This is uh, Graham Bonnet on vocals. Sorry. Then uh, One Night at Budokan. It's a double live. I think this has uh, Gary Barden on vocals. Well, I also have a uh, Japanese pressing of that. And, uh, Michael Shanker Group. Self-titled, right? Great album. Are you ready to rock? Attack of the Mad Axe Man. Killer Era, right around there. And it says Armed and Ready, Cry of the Nations, Into the Arena. A couple great albums. Uh, in a row there. One still in the shrink. Alright, uh, next up, Motorhead. Uh, their last album, studio album, The World Is Yours. It's pretty good. I like that I picked that up store in Baltimore, I think. And, uh, I was over to a friend's house and he actually got on the website and they had a package deal where you ordered the, the vinyl and you got a t-shirt and the album was autographed and I think it was colored vinyl. But uh, 
when he got his package, it was like beat to shit. And it uh, messed up the album cover, and he was pretty upset. So he, uh, it's really limited. I can't remember how many it was. But he uh, emailed Motorhead, the website, and they're like, uh, no problem, we have a couple left. We'll send you a replacement. So he's like, well, I'll send the other one back. And they're like, I ah, just hang on to it. So, and I think that package was like 50 or 60 bucks. It was pretty expensive. So I was, while I was at his house, he was telling me this story. And I'm like, what'd you do with the other one? <clears throat> he's like, I don't know. I might get rid of it or something. I was like, well, what do you want? He's like, uh, 10 bucks. So I'll take that. So as you can see, it's messed up up in here. But the vinyl's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. And... It is signed. I don't know if you can see the autographs. And I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure it was on colored vinyl. Here's the uh, gate pole. Yeah, it's gray. Gray, silver, whatever you want to call it. But I was happy with that. I mean, I know it's it's kind of screwed up on the corner here. It's all kind of banged up, but you know, I would never pay 50 bucks for it or 60, whatever he paid. So I'll take it for 10 with autographs. All right, next, uh, 1916. Somebody just showed this. I think it was Pudsey, maybe. Rock and roll. This is in great shape, still in the shrink. Born to lose. This is like a compilation kind of thing. I was a little late to Motorhead, I guess, as a kid. When this album came out, I picked it up, which is No Remorse, which is like a, a double uh, best of kind of thing from that era. Loved this thing. And I actually had it on like a double cassette. And this one's a little ragged out, as you can see. We just don't see them too often, so I grabbed it. And uh, when this originally came come out you could get the regular or you could get it in like a it's like a leather uh, slip case kind of thing and they even did it for the cassettes for right because I had a friend that had the cassette that went into the leather slip case which looks like this this thing's pretty much uh, dead mint I was really happy to find this And believe it or not, lucked into a second one. So, two copies of that. Uh, Motorhead Beer Drinkers. Always like that cover. And probably the second Motorhead album I bought as a kid was uh, Iron Fist. Uh, like near mint shape, great album. Uh, no sleep, Bill Hammersmith. And of course, the classic Ace of Spades. Overkill. Bomber. Uh, on parole. This was a little, you know. Vinyl's not too bad, but the uh, cover's got some 
fraying, I guess you could say, up on the top. And uh, you have some more overkill. I haven't put overkill. <laughs> some more motor head. I haven't put away yet. Uh, show those in the future. All right, next uh, Motley Crew. Doctor Feelgood. Uh, by the time of the, this album, I guess I was kind of out of Motley Crew. Really like the first two albums. Girls, girls, girls. And I uh, saw this tour two nights in a row. They played in D.C. at the Capitol Center. Played uh, two nights and a bunch of us uh, got tickets for both nights. Uh, rented a hotel room and young and stupid and acted young and stupid. Uh, next, Theater of Pain. And this was uh, not my favorite Motley Crue album, but uh, first time I saw them was on this tour with Loudness opening up. I, Motley Crue's kind of weird for me. I really like the first two albums, and after that, not as much. But live, they were always great. So I kind of always went to see him, or not always, but, you know, I saw him probably four times, I guess, because they're just, they were great back then, live. Uh, shout at the devil. And too fast for love. I'd love to find an original press of this. All mine are just the Electros. I have uh, two or three of them. The next Mortal Sin, Every Dog Has Its Day. This was a cool uh, Australian thrash band. Very uh, Metallica-like. Actually, I think I've read where they opened for Metallica several times when uh, they were over there in the 80s tour. Mayhemic Destruction, Mortal Sin. This is a great album. Any fans of earlier Metallica, you know, like the first four albums, never heard this, check them out. Uh, next, more Blood and Thunder. It's kind of a new wave of British heavy metal, hard rock kind of stuff. Very good album. Second album and the first album was uh, Warhead. Uh, Mordred, Fool's Game. Really like these guys or like this album. Heard a couple after this album and didn't like near as much. But uh, these guys had kind of had their own thing going. Yeah. I don't know, a uh, little bit of a thrashy sound, a little bit of uh, almost like a, some rap kind of stuff thrown in. It was just something different for the time. Gary Moore, Wild Frontier. Gary Moore, Victims of the Future. Corridors of Power. Uh, back in the streets. This is, I think that's the U.S. cover. And then this was the uh, U.K. Yeah. The U.K. cover for the same album, Back on the Streets. Sound like what they look like. Hair metal, glam kind of stuff. I think this was a you know, French person. Not sure where they were from. It might have been French. Uh, 
great album. MOD, USA for MOD. The Mighty Billy Milano from Stormtroopers of Death. Just if you liked, uh, if you ever heard SOD, Stormtroopers of Death, same kind of stuff. It's a method of destruction, MOD. It's pretty funny stuff. Uh, Mistreater. This was kind of a uh, private press. I'm not remembering exactly what they were like. I have to go back and check them out. Uh, Mr. Big, lean on it. Or lean into it. Everybody knows Mr. Big. And the first Mr. Big. Self-titled. And that's it for that stack. Uh, I may cut it here and uh, go ahead and post this one and then start shooting the second part. Maybe try and get everything else in uh, one video instead of making a half hour video or something. So uh, thanks for everybody watching who watched or made it all the way through this and leave some comments. Thanks.